Hello and welcome to Hoopty Doodle, where we are building a Grom Bobber Chopper, kind of a retro mini motorcycle. And today we're going to talk about my process for designing this motorcycle, which is akin to fumbling around in the dark, where you just have your hands stretched out and you're hoping not to bump into anything. And if you move slowly enough, if you do run into trouble, it won't hurt that much. So this build has developed in phases. The first phase, idea. Bing! Wouldn't it be cool to have a mini chopper? Yeah, dude! And then two, let's sketch out what it might look like. And then three, develop real life two scale drawings of what the bike will look like. And that requires some real planning and research. And that is where we are today. Now I started with a scale drawing. And by scale, I mean everything is drawn at one tenth of actual, like the actual bike. And this is really useful because I can reference this drawing when cutting metal and building the actual bike. I know that for every tenth of an inch on the drawing, it represents a full inch on the real bike. And so this also really helps in the design process to determine how everything will fit and look on the finished bike. And at this stage, I found the small drawings to be really useful because I could make mistakes or see something in the drawing that I wanted to change and it change it very easily, which you can see I did several times in this notebook. It was during this process that I discovered, and this is nothing new, many others do this in a much more high-tech fashion than I'm doing it, that I could determine frame angles and proportions of other bikes by looking at photos of them. And this was a real value to me in designing this frame. For instance, by holding this angle finder up to a picture of another bike, I can determine the frame angles on that other bike. I can also determine ratios like the height of the tires in relation to the height of the total bike. And with this information, I can really understand what makes a particular bike look the way it does because I know its proportions. So if I wanted to replicate some vintage bike, this is totally how I would go about it. And while we're on the topic of motorcycle design and construction, I want to mention two references that I have been pulling from to guide me toward a quality finished bike. One is a book called Motorcycle Design and Chassis Handling by Tony Foley, and the other is a website called The Chopper Builder's Handbook, run by a guy named Gary Weishaupt, and I'm probably pronouncing both of their names completely wrong. Now, both of these are excellent resources, but they cover different ends of motorcycle design. The first, Motorcycle Handling and Chassis Design, focuses on race bikes and goes into the physics and engineering details on designing a light, good handling motorcycles. These are bikes with full suspension built to win races. And if I were designing a track bike, I would need no other reference. The second, the Chopper Builder's Handbook, focuses on choppers, bobbers, etc., and goes into great detail on how to fabricate bikes that utilize what I would call retro technology. Like the hardtail bike with the leafer front suspension that we're building here. I can't recommend both of these resources enough. They're very informative and very thorough. Now on this build, I was originally planning on using a one and a half inch round tube with a 14 gauge wall for the backbone of it. The stock bike utilizes a single 14 gauge tube to support the entire bike. And I was planning on using multiple tubes to support the bike. And after reading the chassis handling and design book, I was under the impression that 14 gauge tube would be on the stronger end of motorcycle frames. However, then I looked at the Chopper Builder's website and found that he uses 11 gauge tubing for the entire frame, which seemed like overkill. But then again, we're talking about a hardtail frame where there is no suspension. So the frame is taking all of the impact from the road. And so 11 gauge might be appropriate. Plus this guy has like 30 years of experience. So he probably knows something. So I'm going to be making my Grom with 11 gauge wall as well which should set a record as the world's strongest Grom frame. And so with the small sketch in hand and finished, I can now order metal, go pick that up, and then begin working on creating a real life sketch of the frame. And I will later reference this real life sketch as I cut and bend tubing to make sure that I'm on the right track because I'll be able to lay tubing onto the sketch and make sure that it's correct. And so that's the plan. That's what we should be doing in the next video. And that's my experience thus far with frame building. Hopefully it provides some great insight to somebody out there. It makes your life a lot easier. So good luck on your own builds, whatever they may be. Thanks for watching this video. 
We'll see you next time.